Okay. So, we are uh, we are back again. So, this is actually what we have seen. This, so, all steady state value of generation and delta p tau 1 2 all will remain same only the only that uh, two units earlier it was not under A G C now it is under A G C right. So, dynamic responses are shown in figure 5 and 6 right. So, in this case the A G C controllers have some effect on the transient behavior of the responses, but have no effect on the steady state performance right. So, be case 3 before going to case 3 let us go to this thing. So, this time if you look into that that unit 1 and unit 3 are in your what you call are under AGC. So, peak deviation everything is same, but unit 1 and unit 3 it has your uh, what you call that your uh, AGC controller right. So, that is why that uh, and whatever gains other things are taken for integral controller and load following controller I will give you later Para parameters whatever earlier I said it remains same right. So, but it is frequency and other things all reaching a steady state and that APF that your AC participation factor also has effect on transient responses, but there is no effect on the steady state. Similarly, for your delta F 2 also right. So, it is also lot of oscillations, but ultimately it is going to steady state to 0 right. So, similarly the type power error you can see the lot of oscillations are there right when AGC controllers are there, but uh, actually this gains and this thing uh, some arbitrary value we took right actually not optimized not optimized some some arbitrary value if you optimize perhaps the response will be better. So, in this case your if you look into that actual also same thing is coming minus your 0 0.0115 per unit megawatt 0 0 your what you call 0 0 uh, 0.0115 per unit megawatt and a steady state error is vanishing this is 0 actually this is actually your 0 line this is 0 line right this is actually 0 line. So, it is it is going to 0 right. So, uh, so the only thing is that because of this controller and uh, this thing AGC controller as well as APF right that only that transient behavior has changed, but steady state values remain same right. Similarly, the generation also the transient behavior has changed, but delta p g 1 as usual it is coming to 0, because it is under A G C and there was uh, no uh, contact with any other discourse. So, ultimately delta p g 1 as steady state it is generating 0 power right, but uh, during transient uh, your, uh, be your transient behavior, uh, but transient uh, operation transient uh, time duration right, it is some generating some power increase decrease increase decrease but finally, it is settling to a st uh, 0 a steady state right and delta p g 2 also a steady state whatever value was there earlier 0 0.0085 per unit megawatt. So, it is coming it is coming here it is coming here right. So, only thing is that that uh, responses uh, that transient uh, compared to the case 1 now the case 2 transient behavior have changed right. Similarly, delta p g 3 and p g 4 delta p g 3 again it is going to your what you call the 0, because this is 0 line a steady state is 0 and delta p g 4 is matching its steady state value right. So, only thing is that because of AGC controller that your uh, transient behavior actually changes, but uh, steady state value remains same. Now, next one is that we will come back to this that case 3 right. So, that responses which I showed that is for case 2. Now, case 3 in this case the role of the generating unit is the same as in case 2. The contact demand of the discourse that is distribution companies DPM and AC is participation, uh, participation factor also same as in case 2. So, everything remains same AC participation factor also remains same, but however in addition to the contact demand of 0 0.005 per unit megawatt for disco 1 it also demands an additional power of 0 0.005 per unit megawatt which is uncontacted that means distribution company 1 its contacted power demand was point total demand was 0 0.005 megawatt in addition to that it also want uh, that point 0 0.005 per unit megawatt which is uncontacted right. So, this I will skip because I have already explained right. Now, that means that delta P L 1 uh, uncontacted is point 0 0.005 per unit megawatt. Now, when an excess demand occurs that we have discussed earlier and which is and is not contacted out to any generation companies right. 
the change in load appears only in terms of the area con only in the terms of the area control error right hence the additional demand or shortfall of generation has to be you know, shared by all the gen codes of the area in which the contacted violation occurs and the generation in other areas remains unaffected right thus at steady state on the occurrence of an uncontacted demand the unit uh, generation given by equation 17, uh, 17 get modified to. So, first uh, before before this telling this one that modification I will go to that diagram once again. So, what happened in this case now you then will go to the simulation then everything there sorry then everything uh, your what you call will be uh, clear to you. So, in this case that this uh, your unit 1 that is this unit 1 and uh, uh, it was uh, in and uh, in area 1 that un, uh, that uncontacted disco 1 uh, that one has uh, demand some excess power that is 0 0.005 per unit megawatt right. So, and second thing is that your this unit 1 actually not under your AGC AGC. So, that means this this part should not be there. So, K 1 should be is equal to 0 right. So, if K1, K1 is equal to 0, then in this case APF, APF2 for this case is equal to 0 and this value is equal to 1, right. So, earlier we have seen that uh, when there was no uncontacted power demand, delta PG1 was actually at steady state it was 0. Now, this load falling controller is not there for, uh, for your uh, unit 1, but your that is K10. But it is under AGC because APF1 is 1 and APF2 actually it is 0 and it is under load following that is unit 2, but uncontacted power demand has happened here. So, there are two discos in each area that means I am writing here. So, that means delta PL1 UC dash it actually it was 0, 0, 005 per unit megawatt, right. This demanded by disco 1, but in area 1 that PL2 dash u c equal to 0, 0.0 that is that is I am making p delta p l dash right that means delta p l 1 u c the total uncontacted demand delta p l 1 u c right is equal to this one plus this one that is actually nothing but 0, 0, 005 per unit megawatt right I am putting dash do not confuse here also delta p l 2 u c is there that is nothing but delta p or what you call is uh, delta p l 2 uh, 3 dash uh, UC plus delta PL2 dash delta PL2 dash your uh, PL2 uh, use uh, delta uh, your here it is making delta PL1 that is delta PL3 dash UC plus delta PL4 uh, dash UC right. So, there should not be any confusion. So, that means this delta PL1 we see basically 0 0.005 megawatt, but this unit that is your unit 2 it is under your load following. So, this generation will uh, this delta P G 2 will chase this load. So, this this unit will not generate that extra power 0 0.005 per unit megawatt, but this unit is not under load following, but it is under A G C and A P A P is 1 that means delta P G 1 will generate that uh, will take care of that at generating additional power and it will give it to the distribution company 1 right. So, at steady state at steady state in this case delta p g 1 s s it must be is equal to 0, 0, 005 per unit megawatt because a p f is 1 and this is 0 even if you even if you a p f suppose for example, if you make a p f is equal to 0 0.7 then a p f is equal to here it is 0 0.3, but it will not help to generate that 0 0.005 by this one. So, it will be a, it will be a contradiction because whatever is there generation that uh, uh, contacted power for unit 2 this unit 2 generation will chase this load right. So, in this case A p f is equal to 1 and uh, this thing A p f 1 1 and your A p f uh, 2 is 0 and here no uncontacted power demand. So, in this case this theme will remain same. So, there will be no load following here A p f should be equal to 1 A p f should be this unit will be load following right. So, I hope uh, this has been understandable to you. So, that means, we will I will go back to that uh, that's that case right. So, let us hold on. So,
So, this uh, this I skip I told you already shown for that case too. So, now that means, thus a steady state on the occurrence of an uncontacted demand the unit generation given by equation 17 get modified to. So, we write like this that delta P g 1 steady state delta P g 2 steady state delta P g 3 steady state delta P g 4 state is equal to A P f that is A C participation factor into the delta P 1 dash U C means that is the uncontacted power demand if any demanded by disco 1 distribution company 1 delta P L 2 dash U C means uncontacted power demand demanded by disco 2 right. Then this is delta P L 3 dash U C that is uncontacted power demand demanded by disco 3 and delta P L 4 uh, your what you call dash un uh, U C that is uncontacted power demand demanded by your uh, disco uh, 4 right. So, that means in that block diagram whatever we have seen that in general that your delta P L 1 U C actually is equal to delta P L 1 dash I told you this one plus delta P L 2 dash U C right. Similarly, in area 2 area 2 somewhere I am trying to accommodate it over writing on it delta P L 2 U C is equal to delta P L 3 dash U C plus delta uh, your P L 4 dash U C right. So, this two has to be added because all these things right. This is for delta P L 1 U C for that is for area 1 and this is for area 2 right if there is any. So, and this is actually A C participation factor plus plus whatever contacted power demand you have delta P G C 1 delta P G C 2 delta P G C 3 delta P G C 4 this is equation 18 right. So, if it is so that means that in the area 1 that distribution company 1 actually that demanded 0 0.005 extra power. So, this should be 0 0.005 right and delta P G C 1 contacted power demand because it was not under load following. So, it was 0 and this was 0 0.005. So, steady state it will be 0 0.005 and this APF matrix I will show you it is a diagonal one APF 1 is 1 right multiplied by that. So, same thing will come. Uh, so, just you have to put. So, what is AC participation factor this APF matrix I call right. So, this APF matrix actually is this one this is APF 1, APF 2, APF 3, APF 4. So, in this case APF 1 is 1. APF 2 uh, APF 2 is 0 and again APF 3 is 1 and APF 4 is 0, but in area 2 there was no uncontacted one, but APF 3 is 1 that means the unit 3 is under AGC, but there is no load following. So, that load following controller the value K 3 will be is equal to 0 right. So, that is why it is 1 this matrix is this is 1. So, this is 0 this is 1 and this is 0 only 2 element non 0 elements right. Therefore, delta and it is I told you delta P L 1 dash U C is 0 0.005 per unit megawatt uh, that is demanded by the distribution company 1 right, but all other delta P L 2 uh, dash U C is equal to all these things delta P L 3 dash U C delta P L dash U C is equal to 0. So, if you use this, so therefore, if you use this uh, this thing this uh, this equation 18, then your delta P G 1 S S will be APF 1 into delta P L 1 U C plus delta P G C 1. So, delta P G C 1 is 0. So, it is actually delta P G 1 S S is equal to 0 0.005 per, per unit megawatt that I told you. Now, it may be noted that the generation of other Genco's are steady state that is delta P G 2 S S, delta P G 3 S S and delta P G 4 S S are same as in case 2 because if you use this formula all you will get this is APF. So, this APF you put it here and multiply and get all this delta P G S S. So, you will get the same thing same as in previous case. So, that means your delta P G 2 S S is 0 0.0085 per unit megawatt delta P G 3 steady state is equal to 0 0.0 per unit megawatt and delta P G 4 S S is 0 0.0115 per unit megawatt. Now, since as steady state the delta p tai schedule actually delta p tai 1 actual. So, delta p tai error also will be 0, 0.0, but as some uncontacted demand is there and GRC is there. So, dynamic responses will be deteriorating right. So, dynamic responses are shown in figure 7 and 8. So, when you come to figure 7 
that lot of oscillations are there in frequency deviation, but you see that a steady state it is 0, the deviation is 0. Similarly, for frequency deviation in area 2, right, that is also a steady state frequency deviation is 0, but some oscillations are there. And when that extra, one other thing is that previous cases we have seen the peak deviation was what you call minus 0 0.08 hard, right. But now in this case, the peak deviation is much higher, right it is much uh, higher. So, uh, here also same thing right. So, because this has happened because of uncontacted power demand right. And here also because of uncontacted power demand if you look into that, that huge oscillations in tie power your error as well as actual huge oscillations are there, but at steady state that your actual power some steady state value will be there we have calculated already but uh, at type dash 1 is error, but error will be 0 because this is a 0 line. So, error will be 0 right. So, that means uncontacted power demand also as soon as it is coming apart for your contacted one that dynamic response is actually getting deteriorated right. Similarly, if you look into the generation also same field same case, but in this case you will see that delta P g 1 a steady state generating 0 0.005 per unit megawatt right. So, this is this is your uh, your steady state it is matching right. It is actually scale is you can see and multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3. So, and delta P g 2 that you need to whatever power it is supposed to generate. So, it is generating here right. So, uh, so already it is uh, your what you call it is uh, coming it is up to 150 second it was drawn right. So, uh, already whatever steady state value uh, this thing it is matching. S similarly, for your what you call for delta P g 3 and delta P g 4. So, delta P g 3 also it is coming to 0, it is 0 and delta P g 4 also settling to its that is your uh, 0 0.0115 I think right that the steady state value as steady state. So, that means uncontacted power demand is uh, taken care of by the unit which are in, in that area 1 which are under AGC right. And another thing is you can examine of your own that suppose some uncontacted power demand is there and there is no integral controller that means no units are in AGC and just see that how things are you can put it in simulink also no problem what is happening something will happen right. So, why and why what it is whether just check whether frequencies going to the steady state values or not and the delta p t error are also going to steady state values or not when no AGC controller, but uncontacted unco your load following controller will be there, but no AGC controller that is k i 1 is equal to k i 2 is equal to 0 right and just see uncontacted power demand what is happening. So, next one is case 4 right. So, in this case it, it was in the case 3 actually it was seen that the uncontacted power demand in area 1 was made completely by unit 1 since it was the only unit under AGC in that area right. However, if we desire I mean if it is so desired that some portion of the uncontacted demand be taken up by other unit that is unit 2 in area 1 right. Assuming that it has some reserve capacity that is your spinning reserve right. Then a different control scheme is required and this control scheme actually is shown in figure 9 right. I will show you the figure 9. So, actually what happened first you see this figure. So, first you <coughs> see this uh, just just let me little bit reduce. So, if you see this one then in this case what will happen that not as a whole it has been it has drawn it has been it has drawn here, but I will go to the diagram once again. So, in this case if you see that this is my AC controller right for your uh, that AGC controller for area 1 integral controller only minus k i 1 upon s right. Now, A p f 1 and A p f 2 to uh, your what you call that is your AC participation factor, but question is that this unit unit 1 is under AGC, but not load following that means if other other things are not shown here it will be very huge then I will go to that one second to the diagram I will tell you in detail. So, AGC and in this case you are what you call that load following controller gain was 0. And similarly in this case you are what you call that load following controller is here 
right. But this uh, this part earlier was not in AGC, but as soon as what we are doing is this APF 1 that AC participation factor 1 then APF 2 is equal to 1.0 right. Now, if we want that this unit will share say 60 percent of that total uncontacted power demand right. Uh, my our total uncontacted power demand was 0, 0, 005 per unit megawatt that demanded by disco 1. We want the unit which is under AGC it should give 60 percent of that that means my APF 1 is equal to 0 0.6 that means at steady state unit, uh, unit 1 should generate that 0 0.005 into 0.6 right. So, uh, 0 0.005 into 0.6 that is 0 0.00 3 per unit megawatt right and this APF 2 suppose this is now 0 0.4 because this is 0 0.6 it is 0 0.4 total will one. So, this 0 0.4 means that this unit 2 apart from uh, your supplying its contacted demand it should also uh, your what you call uh, generate this power for uh, disco 1 right. So, that means the 0 0.4 into 0 0.005 that is a 0. 0, 0, 0.002 per unit megawatt that means the addition to its contacted power demand delta pgc is its contacted power demand is delta pgc 2 in addition to that it should give this power it should give this power that is my say 0 0.002 in this case right. So, how will conceive that I told you I, I told you uh, in the beginning that this is that u 1 that is your uh, what you call that your uh, that output of the controller. So, at steady state uh, at steady state I told you generally what happened at steady state that u 1 value at steady state it actually uh, become your uh, what you call that uh, total um, uh, power generated right by the uh, ge your generator right because AGC controller. So, you uh, what happen u 1 s s will be equal to your whatever uncontacted power demand will come right that is that, that will be say in this case. 0.005. So, as steady state if you plot it you will see that u 1 steady state actually is showing 0.005. So, uh, that is e that is equivalent to your whatever controller output will come at steady state that is equivalent to that uncontacted power demand. So, that is why that is why what what we have done is that uh, uh, that your this is my u 1 in the area 1. So, a, a feedback is given here that is take output of this one that is here it is going actually here I am making it here that it is APF 2 into E 1 right. This is going that means it is basically it is uh, what it is coming delta P G C 2 plus APF 2 into E 1 right. So, that means this generation delta P G 2 actually it will chase this contacted power demand this one plus APF 2 into E 1 this is actually with the with the during transient this will change, but delta P G 2 C to contract it will remain constant because it is contacted power demand, but during transient it will change, but at steady state it will generate the additional 0 0.002 per unit megawatt right. That means, that means I will go back to once again to that uh, uh, to that block diagram just because here uh, only partially it was done. Uh, so, if you go to that block diagram here right. So, in this case what will happen that this is my uh, your uh, this is my APF 2 right and this is my load following thing. So, what will happen that this is this uh, this APF 1 will be there and instead of giving this one right you can put this one to here this block that is what has been done there. So, it should not be there such that apart from this and suppose this is 60.6. So, 60 percent uh, 60 percent of the uh, your total power uh, whatever uncontacted one will be generated by this uh, Genco unit 1 and uh, apart from generating contacted power uh, by generating unit 2 right this additional uh, uncontacted demand also will be supplied if the unit 2 has sufficient reserve right. So, that is why this way it has been made. But load following controller sorry load following controller is al already there right. So, this is actually for your what you call this additional thing it has come. So, everything has taken together. Now, 
Now, if we take the AC participation factor that APF 1 suppose if we take 0.8 and APF 2 0.2 that means, uh, that uh, generation unit 1 unit 1 will generate 0 0.004 per unit may got a steady state 0 0.8 into 0 0.005. So, 0 0.004 and uh, apart from generating contacted power of unit 2 it will generate uh, additional power that extra that is 0 0.001 that has to be added and that should be the steady state. Now, with all other conditions remaining the same as in case 3, the uncontacted power demand in area 1 will be shared in proportion to the AC participation factor of the units in area 1. Then at steady state, unit 1 and unit 2 will generate the following power as equation 18, right. So, delta P G 1 S S I told you, it will be A P F 1 into delta P L 1 U C. So, that is nothing but your 0 0.8 into 0 0.005, so 0 0.004 megawatt I told you delta P G 2 S S will be contacted power delta P G C 2 plus A P F 2 into delta P L 1 U C. So, 0.2 into 0 0.005 plus 0 0.0085. So, it is actually 0 0.0095 per unit megawatt right. Note that at steady state I told you U 1 will be is equal to uncontacted power. You can verify through simulation although this uh, plot was not shown, but you can verify. As in case 3, it may be noted that the steady state generation of unit 3 and unit 4 remains same because we did not disturb any other thing in the area 2 right. And so, it is actually delta P G 3 steady state will be 0, 0.0 per unit megawatt and delta P G 4 S S will be 0, 0.0115 per unit megawatt respectively right. So, dynamic responses are shown in figure 10 and 11. Now, if you look into that, that this is delta F 1 frequency going to your steady state, uh, steady state is going to the deviation is going to 0 values delta F 2 going to steady state uh, going to 0 value frequency deviation and type of same as before lot of oscillations, but all these things it is matching right. And, and if you see delta P G 1 right delta P G 1 the dashed one now generating 0 0.004 per unit megawatt as this thing and this delta P G 2 apart from its uncontacted power demand it has taken that 0 0.001 additional power. So, 0 0.095 per unit megawatt right. Uh, so, that is happening that is happening here because this if you look at the scale this is happening. Similarly, for your delta P G 3 and P G 4. So, delta P, uh, same as before. So, delta P G 3 is coming to steady state at 0, 0 0.0 and delta P G 4 same as before right. So, same values it is showing. So, so this is your what you call that uh, your variations of uh, this uh, whatever is happening that is during transient, but during steady state I mean at the time of steady state all these things are becoming your what you call uh, the matching to a steady state values right. So, is, uh, only thing is that just I would like to tell that simulation thing we cannot do in the exam right. So, only steady state thing. So, how formulas are given how things are happening everything you have to study. Thank you very much. We will be back.